to ask you about damn right I've got the blues now, I've read all about the, this um, I've seen the pants that you've been wearing the uh, <laughs> Union Jack pants and um, I'd like to learn a little bit about this super uh, CBE um, gentleman that writes books for a living wearing Union Jack pants holding a bass guitar well it's, it started in 1992 and um, a guy who interviewed me for GQ magazine, uh, we, and we talked a bit about music and the blues, and, and he said, at the end of the interview, he said, I'm learning to play the blues, the blues harp, the little harmonica. Yeah. It's called a blues harp. Right. Why it's called a harp, I don't know. A harp is a hundred times the size, but there yeah. we are. So he said, I'm learning to play the blues harp, and when I've learned, I'm going to form a blues band. Do you want to be my bassist? And... I said, yeah, sure, thinking I will never hear from this guy again. <laughs> a lot of people say I'm going to learn a, an instrument, don't they? Yeah. And it very rarely comes true. However, this guy uh, was a bit different. And he, he, two years later, he phoned me up. He said, I've learned to play the blues harp now. And we're, I'm forming a band. We're having a rehearsal in two weeks' time. Do you want to be in it? And he had learned to play really well, actually. He was good. Really well. And that I've tried blues harp I can play the regular you know like Bob Dylan but the blues harp is hard mm. really hard and I've tried to learn and I can't and he had learned really well so I formed this little blues band and it was great fun and um, over the years the personnel changed uh, and then and eventually it came to an end but we played together for something like 25 years really um, and it was great fun uh, I'm, I am in another band Right. Clog Iron, and that's that one's still going, and we're still well. The the last social event that I went to before lockdown was a gig we played yep. in uh, in um, Rosslyn Park Rugby Club. We played one of the, the the lead guitarist is a supporter of the club, so we played at their dinner dance, mm -hmm. and um, that's the kind of thing we do. We don't get paid. We don't we don't. It's fun. We, we don't feel we play quite well <laughs> enough to ask for money. <laughs> I don't know this. But you know, we do get the audience. That 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 gig was that dinner dance was a disaster because lockdown was just coming yeah. and nobody wanted to come out. So we, we instead of two hundred people, we had about twenty five. Oh. But you know what? We rocked the place. <laughs> we had every one of those people on their feet yeah. dancing away by midnight. It was a, it was great, and that's what we do. We're not. Um, you know, we're not some virtuosos on the instruments, but the band playing together is actually quite good. Good drummer, one or two good voices in the band. And, uh, you know, that was a good night. And we, we really did well as, you know, a band that comes along and makes you want to get on your feet and dance. I have a dance, yeah. Do you not think perhaps you could take the band to Germany where you're incredibly... You'd fill stadiums, wouldn't you? We we have actually played in Germany. Oh really? Yeah. The um, current band. Actually, it was damn right. No, damn right. Played a couple of times in Germany during. Admittedly, it was during the Frankfurt Book Fair. Right. So it was a bit of a publicity stunt as well as just of a course. gig. Um, but there are people in the book business all around the world who remember our gigs in Frankfurt as a oh, highlight. Sure they do. We used to play. We'd play on the first night of the fair. Uh, and, um, you know, to to let you into a little secret, it was very popular because of the pe people went there to pull. <laughs> they <laughs> because they thought they'd have a little, have a little, um, you know, fling for the six days of the fair. Right, what <laughs> goes on at the fair stays at the fair. A bit like Vegas. Anyway. Um, but of yeah. course, you being a band member wouldn't be in interested in any of that. I'm afraid not. I'm afraid not. Does that affect you? Probably like me to his if your wife. Uh, there is that. <laughs> yes. Um, a couple more things I'd like to ask you. I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued about this statue. Yes. Uh, in Santa Monica, is it? Uh, since, uh, it's in, um, it, it's in a, a town called Vitoria, uh, which is in northern Spain. It's the capital of the Basque country, and it's outside the cathedral. People laugh when I say it's like a saint, you know, outside. The it looks like it. If you've seen the pictures, <laughs> and if you haven't, have a look. 
but uh, I have not. I have not lived the kind of life that would um, permit me to be <laughs> beatified by the Pope. Anyway, um, I I started to go. They wrote to me. The people from that town wrote to me. Um, the, the pillars of the earth is very very popular in Spain. Yeah. And um, they wrote to me and they said, we're refurbishing our cathedral and we're having a fundraising dinner. Would you consider coming to make a, a speech at the dinner? And, you know, I love cathedrals. I had never seen this one. And uh, so I went. And, um, and they said, of course, we'll pay your hotel and first class airfare. I said, no, no, I'll pay my own way. It's a, it's a charity. I don't want yeah. you to pay, give charity money to me. I'm going to have a good time. I'm going to go around the cathedral anyway. I, I went there several times afterwards and I sort of got a bit involved in it and it was very interesting because where, as they were refurbishing the cathedral they built steel staircases so that you could go all the way up to the roof and you could see as they, they were taking away the surfaces and you could see inside and then down deep there were skeletons under the floor. Really? And the whole, it was it was very interesting, and they made it into a visitor attraction, and um, so, and of course they would take me out to dinner, and you know, dinner in Spain, you you get there at ten o'clock, you don't get anything to eat till half past eleven, by which time you're you're pie-eyed with the Rioja. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I had a great time there, and one day they said to me, "We'd like to do a statue of you. What do you think?" <laughs> I said, "My <laughs> goodness me! Nobody's ever asked me that before. Of course, I'd love it. How flattering!" Yeah. And so there it is now. It's it's a good one too. It's it is actually. Likeness. It is very good likeness. It got the hair perfect. Yeah, yeah, and it's oh, what a legacy! And people, um, people take selfies. With, with my statue outside the cathedral. It's great. <laughs> Strange, isn't it? To think that people are standing taking pictures Funny of you. Funny thing, yeah. Perhaps yeah. they think you're a saint already. Uh, yes. <laughs> I think or maybe not. I think they know I think they know a bit too much about me. Mm. <laughs> I'm going to leave that one there. Um, the other thing that I was interested in, and I've said this before to somebody, you've been writing books for like 40 years. Yeah. Where and how do you keep coming up with, without kind of trying... Or without repeating yourself from a previous book or, uh, you know, how do you bring the freshness to it all the time? Well, pe you see, people, people like us, our imaginations work all the time. Mm -hmm. And it was like this from childhood for me. When I was a kid, I was always pretending to be something else. I was always, you know, the captain of a spaceship or a cowboy or, you know, or a, or a football star or something I was always imagining myself in different situations and and I think most novelists are the same they mm. just can't help imagining stuff all the time so it is it just sort of comes and um, now that I've been doing this for so long something intrigues me uh, I read something or I see something on telly or talking to somebody. Somebody says something and I say, I think I could make a story out of that. And it's, and it, the, the imagination is working. It all kicks in then. So it's sort of, I mean, it is a gift. I think, I think you're probably born with a mind like that. I think so. My mother was very imaginative and I, I might have, you know, I might have picked it up from her. But I think it's probably, more likely, it's wired into your brain. Because, mm. I mean, I've tried to just write short stories. Um, even for going back in the school days when you had to write something. And it, my mind would always wander off to something else. And then you'd read it back and think, that's part of a TV show I watched last <laughs> week. Or, Hang on, that's a, that's a little bit of that James Bond show that I saw a couple of weeks ago. You know, so, but you don't seem to have that problem. You seem to be able to recreate... Well, I think we all we all read other people's work. All all novelists are also novel readers. Mm. Um, but I think if you've got this kind of mind, you take an idea from somebody else. Uh, you, whether you like it or not, you transform it. So, for example, take hugely popular in the last oh, 20 years, serial killers. Yes. Okay? Loads and loads of novels. But they're not actually all the same. 
each not each writer brings his own set of ideas and enthusiasms to that basic concept of the serial of, of the serial killer and so i think if you're a real writer then that happens to you automatically you might think i might think i'll do a serial serial killer story it won't be like anybody else's the people who do get into trouble who pe are people who like the idea of being a writer but they're not really they don't really have that sort of imagination so they end up just sort of repeating things that they've read sometimes unconsciously sometimes without realizing you know they you they don't do what you did and, and look at look at it and say I saw that on telly two weeks ago they sort of forget about that and then they produce something and somebody else says blimey I wrote that and um, th and they get into trouble but but for real writers it doesn't actually really happen yeah. and if you got uh, you've got the new book coming out in September um, anything else in the pipeline or are you starting to sort of ease off and take things a little bit easier now you know I hate the idea of easing off and taking things easy really if when I go to hell, <laughs> they will make me play golf every day. Oh, that's heaven. That's <laughs> it, not hell, that's It heaven. is heaven for many people. <laughs> I can't imagine anything worse. I would hate to stop doing this. And um, actually, with really, with most creative people, you know, musicians and painters and so on, poets, they don't really stop. They slow down when they start yeah. to get a bit frail. But um, you don't you don't see you know Paul McCartney hasn't retired and he's no that's older true than I am he's in yeah. his mid seventies isn't it Paul McCartney's still yeah. and I'm still buying his records he's making still making great music and um, if you the thing is we do what we love you see I love good stories mm. I read all the time all kinds of things murder mysteries science fiction uh, Victorian novels and and that's if I think of something that will make a great story, I can't wait to get started on. Really? It. Yeah, yeah. I, th I, th I'm really keen. So, the idea of stopping is awful. <laughs> <laughs> Are you an old-fashioned writer in that you actually write, or do you dictate these days? No, I don't dictate. I've no. See, I was a journalist, so I got used to using the typewriter uh, very early on in my early twenties. And it's automatic to me now to, mm. to write on a keyboard. It's obviously not a typewriter <laughs> anymore no. as a keyboard. but that, So that's automatic, and I, I type with ten fingers, so, so I don't even think about typing. You know, it's, 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 it's like talking. It yeah, you don't even look like anymore. Yeah. Um, uh, and I can't imagine dictating. You know, sometimes you have, you have nightmarish ideas, don't you? And I think, what would I do if I, if I lost my eyesight? I couldn't read, but of course I could listen to books on tape, so that wouldn't be the end of the world. But how would I write? If I dictated and then couldn't see it afterwards, that strikes me as being difficult. So, um, uh, touch wood, I'll, I'll carry on For as long on the as keyboard. As long as it's humanly possible. As long as it's possible. As long as you're still breathing. <laughs> That's it. Uh, Ken, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you with us today. Thank you so much for coming in. Um, I know you've been in doing um, a little thing for... Steamage Borough Football Club. Um, I'm not going to say anything about that actually because it will be a nice surprise. Um, but it's been a pleasure. I'm awfully grateful for your time and look forward to seeing you back at SG1 Media Centre sometime soon. That would be great. Thank you for having me. I've You're enjoyed very that welcome. conversation. Thank you. Great. Take care.